All right, are we live? Let us know if we're live in the comments because it is time to start our live stream, our final Kickstarter live stream. Are we live? Well then, hello. I am no longer Brandon Sanderson. I am B Money. You're gonna have to call me that now. Um, I have spent all the Kickstarter money. Uh, you can see um, I, I have these nice, do you have to see these? See what we got here? Oh, uh, it's just on this camera right Oh, now. just on this camera, there yeah. we are. Uh, don't worry, people will not have a hard time people seeing People are not that. gonna have a hard time <laughs> seeing that, uh, that I've got, uh, that I am, I'm well equipped uh, now that I have, now that I've hit the stratosphere among uh, celebrity um, Kickstarter novelists, uh, we have to change my name. I have to have a new persona. So, so you know, make sure you address your questions to B-Money. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's going to be quite this special. Um, I have, um, we'll be having some, some regular plebeian guests, but also some rock star guests among my new friends um, that'll be joining us today. Uh, but first, one of our kind of normal, non-blinged out guests um, who does not have any gold dice uh, attached to her. Uh, Kara, you're going to come on and tell us some stuff. So, hey, welcome to the live stream. Uh, do we have like a countdown and stuff? Like, is that... Oh, I was going to work on that. No, anyway. don't worry about okay. it. We'll, we'll just have to, we'll have to keep that all in our minds. I can do uh, this one. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we, we could start up that thing and, and get it on. Oh, it so. only goes to 60 minutes. So we'll do it for the second hour. At second hour, we'll have a countdown. Oh, and I need to move your camera now that... Mm. Pull on there. Mm. So. All right. Yeah. Nice to see you. I need to money. know what people are thinking of my new rock star persona. So just uh, watch the comments and see, see if people are uh, appropriately impressed. Well, Danny um, Moody wants to know if that's a Black Lotus. Uh, this is a beta Black Lotus. Uh, this is my actual beta Black Lotus <laughs> from my cube, uh, which has, you know, now I figured what, what do you, gold chains are so last week. Right? Yes. Right. Yes, yes. Everybody has gold chains. Uh, I needed something that, that appropriately, uh, you know, showed off, uh, showed off uh, my new status. Yes. So, yes. so the beta black lotus. Um, <coughs> so you can see my black lotus <laughs> there. Um, yes. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, thank you for tolerating my uh, presence here. Yes, yes. Uh, be mm -hmm. money. Uh, we have a few very boring things to talk about. Uh, that is cool as your bling for sure. Um, so as everyone knows, the, the Kickstarter ends today at 5 p.m. And so I want to do a quick uh, summary of what that means. Mm. So once it ends at 5 p.m., you will be getting emails saying that, surprise, we funded. Uh, oh, yes. Woohoo. Mm. Yeah, thanks, thanks. You know, it's it was been, a close one. <laughs> yeah, it was really close. <laughs> but been joking about that. They go to the page and says, be warned, this will only happen if it funds in yes, time. Yeah, so yes. you, you'll mm. get a noti an official notification that it has indeed funded. And then um, the credit cards will start, the, your card on file will start being uh, charged. And so you mm -hmm. should get another one. I don't know when because it, we have a few charges to go through. But hopefully within the next probably 12 hours, uh, your account should be, you should get a receipt saying that your pledge has um, been taken. Um, if, if you don't get one, uh, don't panic, but make sure your card is up to date, all your information is up to date, and make sure you're using a, an email that you actually check. Um, Kickstarter, if there are any errors, Kickstarter will contact you. Please don't contact us. Yes, they'll contact you nicely. if there's an error in your, uh, your, your processing yes, or whatnot. Yes, yeah, Kickstarter will let you know. Um, but make sure your info is up to date so you hear about that. Yes, mm -hmm. please. Um, also, it's also important that uh, the email you use on Kickstarter will be the same email that your pledge will be sent to. So please put an email that you will see because your pledge will be sent uh, probably in anywhere from 7 to 15 days. Uh, we have to do this in rounds because of how many there are. Uh, and it will be coming from Backerkit. Yes. So our pledge, our pledge manager will be coming from. A lot of people do this these days. There's just a, yes. an extra service behind the scenes that helps facilitate all this. We use a group yes. called Backer Kit. Yes. So. And they are, they've been great to work with us. Um, uh, but it will come out in waves. So watch for that one. That one won't come um, probably for another week to a week and a half. 
Uh, so I think that was that. So that will, uh, the other thing with Backer Kit is we have a pre-order store that will go uh, on, that will will go live once the Kickstarter is done. Right, and so the backer kit, you can upgrade to something, you can add extra copies, like, yeah. This is for those who didn't back Kickstarter. Oh, okay. Or if for some reason you want okay. more than one pledge. Okay. Uh, so this is where this, uh, okay. if, you, if you've pledged, wait for your pledge okay. to show up. That's the okay. big, big thing. And yeah. then they can upgrade that or change that or tweak things. But if, um, yeah. Yeah. And then the other thing is the people who are shipping to Germany, they had a a hiccup, a hiccup on Kickstarter side, yes. uh, which is kind of annoying, but these things happen. So you haven't been charged, charged shipping. shipping. Well, you haven't been charged anything yet. Right, right. You will yeah. have to pay some shipping. It's ridiculous. We're sorry. We're yes. working on finding a way to distribute locally, but we can't do that on this Kickstarter. Yeah, so. we can't. Yeah. So uh, that will also come through, but that'll come through the pledge manager. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, wait for, and we have some fun questions on the survey. Yep. So I hope they'll enjoy answering them. Uh, so we did a, a couple fun things there mm -hmm. also. Uh, the pre-order store for those who for some reason missed it this month yes. uh, will only be open till April 30th. And we will uh, be done. We will not open it uh the last one we opened up for about three months this one we're only one opening up for a month yeah because we need to know how many of these to order because exactly. come may we're going to start ordering yeah, things. yeah exactly you're exactly yep. right yes hopefully so. we'll have a warehouse by the time they start arriving <laughs> a new warehouse yeah i do have a couple things in my in yes. inbox that i need to deal with yes yes so this is what part of be money's money is going to be going yes. to is getting a big warehouse yes all the the exciting things about being uh you know the the rock star kickstarter author lifestyle yes. owning yes. warehouses yes, yes. Mm -hmm. it'll be yes great and we will mm -hmm. make sure to you know put it up to be money's expectations yes yes so um i think oh uh yeah, I think that covered everything. I have one more kind of fun thing that mm. we're throwing at. Uh, so we announced on Tuesday the pin set. Yes. The collectible or Cosmere collectible. Or what? I'm the one that came up with it. I yes. should be able to say it. The Cosmere character collectible pin set. Yes. Yes. So we had a lot of people that wanted that as an add-on. And so oh. we heard them. Okay. And so we will be so doing So you can get a second copy. Yes. Or if you bought... A reward that isn't getting that you can add the four on and no. well, it'll oh. be 12 it'll be 12 you can only, only add the 12 because if, yeah okay yeah because we can't complicated we can't do um but maybe we will make those four available for sale probably in 2024 and, yeah individually eventually yeah um because yes. there are there's it's this one of the smallest tiers but there are people who ordered the boxes yes. but not the books they wanted ebooks plus the swag boxes yes for you we'll find a way for you to eventually get those yes. uh those pins that'll come in 2024 yes for 2023 everything is, being, just, is, yeah. is box sets yes so this we, is essential yes. for us because yes. this is very complicated very doing complicated. in uh yeah so we, we mm -hmm. will have the box set where it's all yeah. 12 of them available as an add-on, and it will be shipped in December of 2023. Okay, yeah, once, once we the have them all. Have so you'll yeah. get an extra copy of set yes, of if they of will. So that is, um, we did hear the people, a lot of people were interested in that. So we will be adding that. That will be found only on the backer kit. Mm -hmm. It's not found on Kickstarter. So. And that's it. Yeah. It's not impossible that Cosmere, Collectical, Col Cosmere, Cosmere Character, Character Col Collectible, Collectible Pin, pin set, set will eventually have more characters from yes. future Kickstarters added on. Yes, because so. it's so hard to only pick 12. Yes. So, <laughs> so we are. We will be, we actually already have planned to hopefully uh, yes. add to this collection. Yes. So, so. all right. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you, you B-Money. Yes, yes. Um, so now, let's do a giveaway. Yes, let's let's. Yes, let's bring it over there. Um, why don't you bring it over there? What's our What's our first giveaway? For some reason, the room is very dark and it's hard for me to see. So when our guests come <laughs> arrive, let me know. I guess this is my life now. I uh, the, when you are a celebrity rock star Kickstarter author celebrity, you then you don't need to see. You have yes. people to do You have people you. to do that for you. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Well, we have a – our first, first giveaway is a Doom Slug set. So it's a mm -hmm. set of Doom Slug socks, the patch and pin, which we don't currently sell. So this mm -hmm. is a hard one to find. Uh, the T-shirt and our favorite, of course, the Doom Slug plushie. Um, and so the keyword to type in the chat is Doom Slug. All one word, 
it, caps don't matter, but uh, Doom Slug, and we will pick a winner, and that winner will need to email contest at brandonsanderson.com, and we will send it out. And I do want to say that this is only for those on YouTube. Only for yes. those on YouTube, sorry. Works, unfortunately. Sorry. Uh, sorry, if you're watching on, on somewhere else, come over, over here to, 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 uh, to do this, and then you can go back to your platform of choice. You know, what I think it is, is that the shine of, of the rings that you wear when you are a celebrity, author, rock star, Kickstarter rock star, um, is so bright that you need something, otherwise you'll blind yourself with your own, uh, your own luminance. Yes. Someone play shiny. Don't. We'll get copyright struck. Um, so our next our next guest we have here is Brendan Fraser. Hey guys. <laughs> Fresh off of uh, Doom Squad. Yes. 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 I feel like close I'm Doom Patrol. Mm, that's all right. That's all right. You, you are the bling. Yes. And I, I, I even have I have a, a purple suede hat. Oh yeah, that you would be perfect. Worn. You probably would have wanted to steal it, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't be outblinged. <laughs> True. By uh, this is uh, this is Steve Argyle. Uh, hey, everybody. Our our good friend Steve Argyle, who's been working away at one of these books. Uh, remember not to say the title if you can th- uh, remember no it. Title, that's, no spoilers. Yes, that's been hard for hard. us. <laughs> um, but uh, we want to mention mention that uh, Steve's going to be hanging out with us this the to keep us entertained. Um, and we're going to be taking questions. Uh, you mm-hmm. can ask questions to Steve Argyle. Um, or, you know, under his alter ego is Brendan Fraser, which he occasionally acts in movies um, uh, for. Ooh, ooh. That's not shiny. Um, um, and, or you can ask questions of B Money. But I do want to warn people that other celebrity, um, very high profile celebrities uh, from my new life are going to be showing up, my, my new friends, uh, and they may interrupt, uh, interrupt you, and we may have to stop uh, occasionally for their, a, their arrival. Right. Yes. They'll be so. coming via Sky Yacht. Yes, yes, coming via Sky Yacht um, and things like that. So uh, how you been? I have been fantastic, mm. and this has been such an amazing thing to watch. Like, We hit 41 million right before it started, uh, and this is a fun number because that puts us at double. What uh-huh. the previous the highest Kickstarter was in history? That is amazing. So you know, uh, and I want to say we're at forty-one one hundred, well, almost one ten in yes. the fifteen minutes. So almost a hundred thousand dollars. Almost done. So we might hit forty-two, uh, which would be which is an interesting number in Indeed. uh in <laughs> uh science fiction fandom, shall we say? Uh, now we do happen to know that there are a certain number of you, uh, who are watching who want to be the last one pledged. <laughs> We know, we know, uh, and last time, because last time we did this, people waited for the last few minutes to pledge because they wanted to be the last if they could, um, and they crashed Kickstarter. <laughs> uh, and then some of them didn't actually get to pledge. Uh, now we'll have the pre-order store, which is kind of basically like, hey, an extra six months of being able to do this. So, uh, But just warning you, if you want to be the last one, you might run into Kickstarter crashing. Uh, Kellen wanted you to... Take pick the last half hour, so the last 10 minutes. You do you, right? <laughs> you do what you want to do. But we're just going to warn you: Kickstarter has the potential to go down. We've crashed them multiple times um, in our in our lifetime. If that happens, do they like extend it a little bit? Or no, that, but that's why it, we have the it. pledge manager, right? Mm-hmm. That's why we have basically this. Uh, the the campaign goes for 30 days, but then there's a did you miss out? This is basically the same as the campaign. Um, it just doesn't count on Kickstarter's, you know. Uh, numbers like last time we got to like eight million, but it was only six point seven of that or something showed up on Kickstarter. So um, that's just you know for the for the people who didn't quite get in on it, just before we send our things out, a last chance. So if if it does crash, you have that opportunity. Um, uh, you know, I might I might need more black lotuses. Apparently, <laughs> uh, well, I, as I recall, you have three. I do have three black lotuses. One so. Of them- is yeah. the hand painted by Chris Rush? Yes. Right. Um, the delightful Chris Rush, before he passed away, hand painted me a black lotus, which is actually um, more valuable, at least in sentimental value, than the one here. And then there's the first one that I bought way back when mm-hmm. uh, that you guys, uh, you and Kat, um, got for me at a convention you're at because mm-hmm. you know we wanted to make sure we were getting one that was from a reputable source and things. And so you went and got one. You got Chris to sign it. And um, 
I get, wasn't able to sell that one, even though as I upgraded all of my power, uh, for those who don't know, this is super nerdy. There's, there's white bordered. Um, old uh, magic cards, and then there's the black bordered ones. And the black bordered ones are much more rare. And I've slowly taken all my white bordered ones and made them black bordered. But I have uh, when I do that, I sell the old one. Mm-hmm. Um, at, I trade it in basically um, at, off a of part of the price because there's no reason to have those. But I wasn't able to really convince myself to sell the one that you know. I have a picture. Uh, with Christopher Rush, and he signed it and things. So that one doesn't go in the cube. The other two do. That one I give to new players if they've never played the cube before. Mm-hmm. They just get to have a Black Lotus to play with that night. So Nice. Mm-hmm. Do, do your fans know the quick story about you and Chris Rush? Uh, why don't you, why don't you tell it? Silent ships in the night. So, yeah. Uh, so we were talking to Brandon, and Brandon's a big Magic fan, mm-hmm. and we uh, we went to conventions with Chris Rush quite a bit. Chris is a huge Brandon Sanderson fan, mm-hmm. so uh, Chris's agent uh, Jeff was like, "Well, we want to like give him something special." Chris has uh, painted a black lotus just for Brandon, and so we uh, we were talking to Brandon and did not mention this, mm-hmm. and uh, Kara was like, oh, well, he really likes Chris Rush, so maybe we can send him a book or something. Mm-hmm. And we, we let her know the secret, and so so neither Chris nor Brandon knew that there were this cross-shipping yes. of this just huge uh, bounty of gifts to each other. Um, and then I got to have dinner with him and Jeff, um, and he was one of the original magic artists, and the Black mm-hmm. Lotus is just iconic. It is yeah. a beautiful piece of art, um, and it's kind of like the face of magic in many ways, and so it was it was really special to meet Chris. Yeah. All Chris, the artists. It's fun to meet the artists. It's fun to get to know them and things like that. Honestly, that's the best part of being one of those artists is mm. I have met uh, and become friends with so many of my childhood heroes, uh, and and current heroes. I mean, now I'm I'm getting old enough that uh, mm. <laughs> there's there's young young bucks that I'm like they are totally going to take my job. It's uh, it's amazing how how many resources people have now to learn that uh, yeah. people are getting so good so fast. So, do we have any questions um, that uh, that people would like to ask? Uh, no spoilers this stream. Just a party this yeah. stream. Uh, before we get to that. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. How about we give one more minute of people to do oh, the entry? One more minute. We'll draw a winner at to do 320. Doom Slug. So mm-hmm. if you haven't done it yet. Um, but don't do it twice. Don't do it twice. Don't do it twice You'll or it kicks you out. Yeah. Mm. So only do it once. So I didn't think of it, but I actually have a little, little itty bitty painting of Doom Slug. Oh, yeah. That uh, I am happy to either throw in the Doom Slug swag Whoa. pack or if you want to do a separate one. I think a separate one. It were, it's worth its own. We're going to have another... Uh, uh, I just forced you to come up with another one. <laughs> let, I have another. I have the Skyward Flight one that we were doing. Well, let, this is worth it uh, okay, on its own. This is this is it's a little. Yeah. I think it's six by six oil painting, so it's small, but it is an original oil painting. So mm. you know, yeah, that's very how nice do I enter? Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, let's uh, let's let's see what kind of things people want to know from me under my new Probably. my new important persona. Uh, we're going to draw the winner right now. Oh, the winner. The winner. If I can see it in the chat when it announces it. There's a lot of movement, so it might be <laughs> hard to follow. Yes. Um, over 5,000 people here, so mm, it's going really fast. Mm. Oh, wow. My fan base is now well aware of, of how, how my lifestyle will now change. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Did we uh, miss it? <laughs> chat's moving pretty fast. Let me... Yeah. So, ah. Uh, so, Elden Ring, I see you've got your, your sword uh, there. I have a sword. I could not help myself. They gave me a sword. I have a PS5, so I actually played it yesterday. I was going to wait. And I'm like, ah, it's now that they've given me a sword, I've got to play the game. That's, so, yeah. so, I have played a f- couple hours of Elden Ring. I'm a little on the same boat as, mm-hmm. as you were, where I'm like, I know when I start, yeah. everything else is going to yeah. just mm-hmm. fall to pieces because I, I know I'm, I'm going to obsessively play it. So I'm, I'm waiting. Yeah. I'm very excited. Mm. So, so I am. Um, oh, oh, oh. Do we have a celebrity guest star? Oh, oh, oh. Celebrity guest star. Celebrity right. guest star. Oh, okay. Come sit down. Come sit down. 
Oh, oh, oh. Maybe, yep. Uh, have a seat. Oh, here is our celebrity guest star <laughs> and his publicist. Drink, just in case. Um, so this is, this is Pinecone. Uh, Pinecone, uh, whose full name is Pinecone Neko, Hello Kitty Chan, Love Sweetheart, Oliver Barbara Sanderson. Uh, names keep getting added to Pinecone. Uh, does anyone want to help uh, Oliver, uh, who is Pinecone's publicist, hold Pinecone here to get him into the lap a little bit better? This or, hurts. Yeah, let's, does someone want to help him? Uh, come over here, grab, grab Pinecone and maybe just kind of lift him up. And, um, and, yep. Okay, now put your arms around him and hold him just on your lap. Oh. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe get a cushion or something. Um, well, we have the little table in it. Well, he's not going to sit on the that. table. Uh, so, um, oh, there we go. There we go. So, he's trying to hold on. He's a little bit, uh, a little bit shy. Oh, he's going to go. He's a lot of bit shy. <laughs> He's actually not that shy. He just likes to explore places. So this is this is our celebrity guest star number one. Um, so Pinecone. He wants to go under the table. He does. Pinecone l used to live in the uh, field next to us and then decided to move into our house. Um, and that was uh, 11 years ago or something like that. And so now we have a Pinecone. Yes. Um, do you, does anyone have a question for Pinecone? And while we're waiting for those questions yeah. to come in, uh, the winner is Divian. Okay. So, uh, Divian, if that's you, email us. Contest uh, at Brandon Contest at BrandonSanderson.com with a link to your YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we'll get this sent off to you. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, questions for special guest star, Pinecone. Uh, Adrian Asplin wants to know, can he has cheeseburger? Uh, Pinecone <laughs> likes to get on the table and eat or lick whatever people are eating. In fact, he he loves fry sauce. Yeah, he, he loves fry sauce. And so yesterday he was eating Joel's fry sauce when Joel had not finished his uh, his burgers and things on time. He is a wonderful cat, but he is obviously he uh, obviously so we'll we'll let him go. Um, um, and uh, thank you. Um, and if there's a uh, why don't you go hand him to Joel? Yep, he's oh. sad. He, he wants to get down so badly. Um, people want to know who his favorite human yes, in the house so is. Yes, so Oliver, you can come back and you can answer some questions as Pinecone's publicist. Um, so uh, why don't why don't you? Uh, so who's his favorite human? Whoever, yeah, Joel's right. Like just whoever is feeding him. And whoever gives him just, treats. Whoever looks like they might be walking toward the treat cupboard. Yeah, he yeah. just follows anybody who, if they're walking towards the the treat cupboard. And, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions for uh, Pinecone's publicist here? Um, Pinecone, what kind of spren would you be? Ooh, what kind of spren would he be? This is from, I think he is a mischievous spren. He's some sort of wind spren, probably. He, he likes to hide and then jump up and spring up and nip at our calves. Only does it to the adults. When we walk outside, he stalks us uh, and then runs and hides again. Any uh, other questions? Is Brandon just a human face for Pinecone the author? Oh, yes. Pinecone, <laughs> Pinecone has ta typed. Pinecone yes. typed one letter in the Wheel of Time. He walked onto my keyboard. He hit E. I left it in a, in a word. So Pinecone has typed. He is a number one New York Times bestselling author. <laughs> Meowther. Yeah. Yes, Meowther. Yes, yes. Oliver, what do you think of your, your father's new, new, new way of looking at the world? Do you, do you like do you like my bling? You're a banana. I'm a banana. <laughs> I, I'm I'm going to assume that that uh, references the lustrous gold color of my bling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Oliver. Uh, take care. Thanks for stopping by and, and bringing bringing pinecone. I think we a, have another. Oh, do we immediately have another celebrity oh, we guest? We do. Okay. Time for celebrity <laughs> guest number two. Celebrity guest number two. Famous for carrying bridges. Fa famous for carrying bridges. Up here? Should we yeah, get him on the chair? Here, down. Let's see if he will. <laughs> he wants the cat. You should just set him on your lap. It is the Lopen. <laughs> um, Look right here. 
<laughs> so the low pen, known as the famous star from uh, from the Stormlight Archive. Uh, his name actually is Lopen, if you haven't seen him before, and he's brought his uh, his Bridge Four uh, outfit here. He uh, he he lives with his publicist Jane and Adam, um, and cheese. so he likes cheese. Which is why his Bridge Four uniform, since quarantine, does not fit quite as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Lopen has maybe been uh, having a little. Uh, I know how that feels. Well, um, he he's also getting used to having a two-year-old in the house who feeds him everything. Mm. <laughs> But he does so have a darling. Two. Can you see him? Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So questions for the low pen. Um, uh, bri bridge for low pen. Uh, Erica wants to know uh, where they can get the bridge four outfit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was made by our sister. So Brandon's sister made Yes, this. who also made my Hades costume mm -hmm. um, and uh, a mist cloak that we, various members of the family periodically wear. So, so if they're, you know. Call her out if there's an interest in this because she did yeah, a fantastic job. Yeah, I think we job. should sell them on we, the store. Right? <laughs> yeah, we we'll totally buy one. We, we need these. Hello, Ben. Mm, bridge four dog outfits. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, current chapter wants to know which Lopen came first. Uh, so this Lopen was named after the Lopen in the books. Yep. Mm -hmm. We felt that, uh, you know, Jane and Adam came and said, we think that a corgi kind of maybe matches. Short legs, mm -hmm. it's just, you know. Yep. It just kind of fit. He is he he he's obviously post radiant Lopen because yes. he has all of his limbs. So. He has all of his limbs. Spoiler, <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> yeah, well, we put it in the poster too. So no, that's well, he's true. He's actually been really good too. Yeah. For being such a happy. Well, he's <laughs> watch everybody, huh, Any questions for uh, the Lopen or his publicist? Uh, Lopen, what is your favorite activity? To bark at birds and neighbor dogs. Yes. <laughs> and yes. to um, our two-year-old child will use a fork to feed him his food. Oh, nice. really loves. Oh, man. I mean, that's a great pastime. Yeah, well, you know, us celebrities, we, we need other people to feed us, you know. We need we need to have lots of people in our employ, entourages. Uh, Jeffrey Smith says, how does it feel to finally be outshined by B money for the first time in your life? Oh, man. <laughs> mm. Right? Yeah. That is true. Lopin, you know, has always been a fan favorite. Yeah. But I feel like B Money passed him. I should have, we should have got Lopin some sunglasses. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He He's going to have to upgrade his yeah, look. He needs to upgrade his look. Yep. Are mm -hmm. you ready to go, Lopin? All right. Off you go. Goodbye, Lopin. Thanks for stopping oh. by. We just left something on the chair. That's oh. all. <laughs> Hopefully, the thing that he left on the chair is not something that's. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, it was it's a, a towel. towel. The it's a towel. It. It's a towel. <laughs> Welcome back, <laughs> Steve. We warned Steve he might uh, he might be interrupted now and then. Um, yes, for some upstaged, uh, I think was upstaged, the, uh, the term. Yes, by some uh, celebrity rock star guests. My new my new posse, right? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's throw a few questions at at uh, me or Steve if we've got them. Uh, Hope for Brilliant 29 says, uh, it's a styling question. Yes. When I look at your older lecture videos, your clothing has really leveled up in tailoring fit and color coordination. Mm. Is this due to advice from your team or your own desire to be more stylish? Uh, well, I did want to be a little more stylish, but I fortunately have a sister whose job for a while, long time was to be a personal stylist at Nordstrom. And she, uh, she and my wife uh, colluded and uh, suddenly my, uh, my costuming grew more, uh, more appropriate to my station, shall we say? I don't know. I say appropriate. The appropriate thing for a fantasy novelist it may not be appropriate for, uh, for everyone else. What I was wearing might have been <laughs> appropriate. But now, now that I'm a celebrity rock star, Kickstarter rock star celebrity, um, then everything's out the window. And now maybe I have to you know, go back to that look at, to be intentionally you know, mm. intentionally slovenly nerd chic is like a, a new thing. Maybe I'll try to bring back, you know, you could do like the, the tank top, but it's all made of gold thread. Oh, yeah. 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 And then but it's it's got to have Cheeto dust on it. Right. Indeed. Because, you know, um, fantasy nerd chic. Yeah. Uh, a question for Steve from Zhao Araujo. I'm sorry about the pronunciation. What are Mr. Argyle's recommendations for someone that wants to learn to draw, especially someone who can barely draw a straight line? So the, uh, the really simple and kind of dumb answer is just start. 
most of art and drawing is about experience more than it is learning from a book or a teacher. Uh, you kind of just put it together as you do it. And so experience is absolutely the best teacher. Um, and the bit of advice I would give is um, go easy on yourself. It is, you kind of never get over that you don't feel like it looks the way you want it to. And uh, like there's a saying that's you, you have brilliant work in you and you have terrible work in you. The problem is they come in the opposite order, <laughs> right? You kind of have to get through some of those awkward mm -hmm. stages, just like anything else. Like if, uh, if you're learning to do any activity whatsoever, you're going to be awkward at it at first. And it's the consistency that will get you there. And I kind of equate it to exercise. If you dedicate a weekend to binge drawing, you're going to get frustrated and you're not going to make that much progress and you're going to quit. But if you just do a little bit every day, uh, you will see improvement over time and uh, you'll get good. So, yeah, my advice is just start doing it and don't uh, don't pressure yourself too much to learn and, and be great in a hurry. Uh, I have a question follow up to that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I've noticed um, from some of my friends and family is that they know that if they practice, they will get better, but being bad is so painful to them um, that it's hard to get over the emotional hurdle of wanting to do that. Any tips on getting over that emotional hurdle? That one is really tough because mm -hmm. we are kind of raised to feel like if we're not good at it, we shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. Uh, and like I, I, I bring the exercise analogy back, mm -hmm. which is you don't have to be good at it for it to be good for you yeah. and enjoyable. I think that there is a lot of pressure that if you start drawing and it's not what you want or it's not something you feel like you want to show somebody or if you show somebody, they kind of go, eh, yeah. good for you. You know, mm -hmm. like that. It, it really uh, it really can be discouraging and uh, for almost anybody who does art it's it's a piece of you it's emotional you uh, you put a lot of time and thought and effort into it and um, it's I, I feel like it is something that is simply good for people to do I think art makes life better and I don't think uh, anyone should worry about how good they are at it if they enjoy doing it, they should do it and know that they will get better. Um, and as far as benefits beyond, look, I can draw, um, art in general is about observation and making decisions. And because of that, you will see it like kind of eke into the rest of your life. You like, if you draw something that you have seen every day of your life, you know, you, you draw one of your friends, mm -hmm. uh, you draw, you have your wife sit for you, uh, you draw your, your car, you know, something that you, you know in and out, or at least you think you do. You will absolutely every single time notice something you didn't realize was there. Because, um, you know, our brains kind of use this shorthand where we, we know a thing. And it's all kind of abbreviated in our head until we have to stop and reproduce it on a page. And because we have to do that, we have to pay so much more attention that we see things we'd never seen before. And that continues, like you learn these observation skills that don't leave when you stop drawing, or at least when you, um, so this is getting to be kind of a long answer, <laughs> but uh, yeah, don't be discouraged is good for you regardless of the outcome. The process is more important than the product. The journey is more important than the destination. So, You'll be discouraged. That it's just gonna happen. Don't let it actually stop you. Now, segueing, I do have something I wanted to talk about. Um, I've noticed that in the music world, you know, people release albums, but the really successful ones, you hear about their singles. I figure I should start releasing singles, um, which means instead of books full of words, just one word. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, the, right. Like now that I, now that I am B money, I sh I should be releasing one word 
So I'll just let you know, my, my, my new single is dropping right now. It's Automatopoeia. <laughs> um, boom, done. I've dropped a single. The extended play, uh, anti-disestablishmentarianism. Yes, yes. Well, you know, I'm not sure if I'm quite ready for that. That's, mm. you know, that's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll build up to that. I thought about starting with the, but everyone does the, mm. right? You know? But you could do an interesting take on the. I could the. do an interesting take on the. I could pronounce it really wrong, I, and then that would be, you know. I'm surprised you didn't go with maladroitly. Maladroitly? Well, one. you know. That's well, the, I guess you've already dropped that's, it. That's the old Brandon. The old Brandon <laughs> Sanderson was maladroitly. The B money is automatopoeia. Oh, okay. Yes. Sorry, I, I got him a little time. confused. I should Stay with have. the time. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yes. I'm not yeah. hip. Well, should we yep. give away oh. Steve's painting? Or? Let's, uh, sure. First, oh. we, we have another celebrity guest star. And then we'll do Steve's painting. We'll have Steve come back. But we need you to go over there, celebrity guest star on the other side. Um, so celebrity guest star is here. Celebrity guest star is Sheldon the Tortoise. Um, do you want him on a separate camera, Adam? I think this one's probably the best one. Oh, um, right, right. If he's going to hold him, though, yeah. uh, he'll be more visible. If you hold him up, that'll be better. Uh, do we have or that we towel have just do. in case? Um, You'll need to loosen it on this do you need uh, Do you need a towel for Sheldon? Um, I, don't, I don't know what turtles need or tortoises need. Um, Sheldon sometimes needs a towel. Let's have, let's have a paper towel ready. Um, well, we have Sheldon, my new celebrity friend, uh, very famous Sheldon the tortoise. He's going to speak into the camera. Mm. So there he is. Yes. He's he is dropping trying to bite it. <laughs> his new single, um, Can you which hear is. Though? I don't think so. Um, there we are. Let's uh, let's have the towel for Sheldon, um, and you can just hold him there or whatnot, or he can. Did we move the camera so he can he's wander gonna, around? He's visible now. Okay, great. Did you bring him any lettuce to to no, get him I didn't. to? Uh, because he might stop and eat his lettuce uh, and be on camera if we had that. But let's have any questions for uh, celebrity guest star Sheldon. Uh, Sh Dallin um, is Sheldon's publicist. Yeah. Uh, where did Sheldon get his name? Um, well... Lean uh, into the camera just a little bit more, okay? Into the microphone? Mi microphone, sorry. Not that's camera, what I meant. microphone. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, well, when I was about, like, really young, um, my, I would always put Sheldon as a name, as a tortoise in thing, in games and things and whatever stuff, and so when I wanted, I decided I wanted a tortoise, and, and, um, they, my parents said I could have it when I turned 10, a pet when I turned 10, and, uh, yeah, I just got him when I was 10 and named him Sheldon. Yep. A lot of people are saying, great R2-1. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What does yes. That mean? It's from a fantasy series oh. uh, that has a giant tortoise in it. He's trying to eat the... <laughs> Nothing? He's it looks like the eat. purple lettuce he likes. Oh, okay. Any other questions for Sheldon's publicist? What is uh, his favorite Teenage Mutant That's Ninja exactly Turtle? what, yeah. That's oh, what what's his favorite Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle? Um, well, I don't know because he never really seen it. Um, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't, I don't know. Is, is he, oh, yeah. I was going to ask if he's a ninja. Is oh. he a ninja? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, One last question maybe for no! Sheldon's po Oh. You want to yeah. stay on forever? No, not forever. Okay. I iceberg or romaine? Huh? What's his favorite lettuce kind? It's the purple lettuce, huh? He likes purple. He likes lots of lettuce. Just he also really loves cacti. Oh, yes. It's his favorite food is cacti. Yes, he just loves it so much. I don't know why. But no spinach, right, Dal? No spinach. No spinach. He will calcium bind if he gets uh, too don't much calcium. Don't bite my finger. Will Sheldon grow large enough to ride like a chole? <laughs> Um, yes, he is a sulcata tortoise, so that means he will get as large, well, it depends on what you say, like a troll, he'll get as big as a coffee table, so. Which is pretty big for a tortoise on, uh, how, uh, oh, our how long does that take? 20 years. Know, 20 years, maybe. That's I don't what know. we heard. Okay. Yeah. Wow. How, how long, uh, do they usually live? 100 years. 100 years. Like that's that. awesome. Th um, over, over 100 years. So that's a good life, lifetime friend. Mm-hmm. Dallin has just loved turtles since he was, before he could speak. 
The turtle was the animal he gravitated toward. Um, and so he had consistently wanted a pet uh, turtle since he was a kid. And we pushed him toward um, tortoises because it's a little easier to keep um, than a turtle. I like turtles and tortoises yep. the same. I've always a tortoise is a turtle. Just like he's a... Going, he's yeah. just going off real yep. quick. He's just, uh, he's very interested. And uh, a employee at our company, Joe... Uh, had sulcata tortoises, and that's the one Dallin he fell in love sulcata. with. Has sulcata tortoises, and we tried to get Dallin to get um, a different one, but he loved sulcata. So, uh, fortunately, we are in a place where we could build an enclosure for him if he, if and when he is big enough that he needs one. So, I want more. What? She only wants more. I think that we need to leave space for plenty of other celebrity guest stars, and we're going to be giving away a prize here in a second. So uh, I think say goodbye to Sheldon. Uh, thank you for coming, Sheldon. Thanks, Sheldon. Um, and uh, we will invite uh, Mr. Argyle back, and we'll give away a, a Steve Argyle painting. And, you know, Steve, we had mentioned this earlier. Are you still planning on doing a sketch at some point? That yeah, so I brought a sketch yeah. pad. Um, oh. And we were, uh, Adam had the idea we could do a sketch on the stream as part of the giveaway. That would be um, awesome. And so one of the questions for the stream could be, what should I draw? I mm -hmm. had a couple ideas. Okay. Uh, oh, we can make a poll if you have a couple yeah. options. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I was thinking that the topics of the day are, of course, the Kickstarter. Uh-huh. So... I could do like the opening scene of Secret Book 2 because that's not super spoiler. It it's isn't. the opening scene. Or because Stormlight 5 is yes. on the horizon. The one uh, bit of, of shard plate that I haven't been able to draw is mm -hmm. Windrunners. So mm -hmm. I could do a Windrunner sketch. That would be pretty cool. Those were my two thoughts. They're not, mm -hmm. it's not ex you know, that's not an exhaustive list or anything, but that's mm -hmm. kind of what was on my mind. Yeah. We'll do a poll and while And the second one was a windrunner? Windrunner mm -hmm. uh, in shard plate. Because the windrunners that you did for our previous Kickstarter were both were both out of shard plate. Mm -hmm. uh, we just want to have a variety, some in both shard plate, some not. And it turned out the windrunner one is the composition that you liked without the uh, shard plate on it. So you haven't mm -hmm. done a shard plate. And uh, I've been thinking about it ever since. So. It's actually good uh, because you can um, we can we can have you sketch that, and we can uh, have some uh, some Steve Argyle time because uh, B Money may need need to go away to mm. get a guest star uh, of the the squawking variety, and the guest star will need to come on when B Money when has transformed back to Brandon for a short time because one He'll does not sunglasses. casually have a black lotus around one's neck when there is a large destructive animal that likes to chew on things uh, nearby. Uh, so, yeah. That's smart, yes. Mm -hmm. So I, I will leave in a little bit. Um, I believe that there is, uh, there we've, got, we've got several more celebrity guest stars during that. I think we have four more still. So, But uh, at some point, I will go get one of those. Excellent. Okay, well, we have a poll up, but mm -hmm. we're also going to do a giveaway. Yes, do a giveaway. For right. the painting. So what are they going to write? Uh, and the keyword Steve. Steve. Cool. So go ahead and do that, and then we'll close it in a couple minutes. Yeah. And while we're doing that, do you want to throw some questions at us? Uh, sure. I will say right now um, there's been 2,600 votes, and it's overwhelmingly uh, pointed towards Windrunner. Yes. All right. So I am uh, I, I'm go. going to end Hugely the poll. Hugely surprised by <laughs> that. Um, yeah, 3,000 have voted, so I think that's a, a good time wow. to end. All right. Well. <laughs> yes, if it, it's a good thing we didn't let the chat come up with ideas. I think we would have ended up with um, something along the lines of Brandon Sanderson announcing more uh, secret projects and George Martin slapping him like Will Smith. <laughs> 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 the, that's the fun thing great. about doing the poll, though. You yeah. get ideas you'd never get, you mm -hmm. know, like, yeah. like mm -hmm. uh, your celebrity guest star that's coming in his shard plate. Yes. That would um, be a fun one. Yes, that's... <laughs> That's possible. The the uh, chromatic chicken scout in his shard plate. <laughs> so, uh, any other uh, questions? What do you got for us? Yeah, Adam? Steve, where did you look for references when drawing the knight knight's radiant art? So, there's a lot of uh, good places I looked, and what was what was interesting is we wanted to create uh, armor that was like distinctively stormlight. Like it wasn't just 
big European style armor. And it wasn't like a mech either. It was somewhere in between where it, it was larger than life, but still connectable. And the other challenge was uh, if we did things right, you guys can be the judge of that. Uh, you would also be able to tell in future artwork, as soon as you see a piece of shard plate, it's like, oh, well, that's definitely a dust bringer. Mm -hmm. Like without any other indications, without having colors or um, like a symbol, you'd just be like, well, that's the style of dust bringers. And overarchingly that if you saw artwork of shard plate at all, you'd just know it was shard plate. You didn't have to have the context that this is stormlight art. Um, so there were a handful of places that I referenced, but it turned out that armor actually wasn't the best uh, reference. Um, it was a little bit too constraining. Yeah, we, we remember uh, Isaac told me early on, we're like, when it really clicked for Steve is when we explained to you that they were the tanks of the Rosharan battlefield. Yeah, that they, I mean, they almost look like you couldn't wear them because mm -hmm. they have to have their own power. And of course, yes. Is it spoilers to say that's kind of how they work? Like if yeah. they're yeah, they have to have their own power. That's that's not spoil too spoilery. Okay. I mean it's it's pretty clear from the first books that they have they, they have a separate power source. They're powered by stormlight and things. So yeah, so they're so big mm -hmm. and powerful that like they they needed to look like you couldn't just wear them. You have mm -hmm. to have that extra power source. Um, so I started for each. Uh, well, we did kind of an overall look mm -hmm. where. They kind of have these stylized shoulder pads, but we didn't want to go as crazy as like World of Warcraft and stuff. Just that that's a little bit of an indicator, very stylized helmets. And then the rest of them uh, followed kind of a, a pattern where they have the big uh, chest piece that holds the, uh, the gems inside. Uh, but sorry, getting back to the reference question, I actually found that a lot of the best reference were things like insects and other plated creatures, mm. uh, arthropods, because they had that organic living armor look to them. We didn't, I didn't want it to look so much like this is living armor, but have a little bit of that. It's more than just a thing you're wearing. It mm -hmm. has more to it. So that's when it started to come together for me. It's like, yeah, I want this to look almost almost grown like still still armor but you know you have the smaller pieces that are almost like scales growing into the bigger pieces so i i looked at insects and i looked at uh crabs and lobster and uh snakes to some degree um but they're more even mm -hmm. like the very first sketch that i sent was was more like big thick scale mail and it yeah. it just wasn't it wasn't what we wanted um, and then uh, the the color schemes Isaac mostly came up with that, and they they fit together just perfectly. So uh, before we go on to the next question, we are going to pick our winner, mm -hmm. and Michael will let me know who that is in one second. Uh, but when I announce it, be sure to email contest at brandonsanderson dot com, and uh, we'll get you in contact uh, with the right people to get. And Stuff. we should do a question while that's happening, just in case it takes time to search through. Oh, I have a quick follow-up. Yeah, we have okay. a winner. So Winks, okay. Winks zero three eight nine. Cool. Congratulations. Send us a send us an email contest at com. So my quick follow-up for uh, people who are struggling with making something creative mm -hmm. uh, and and finding reference. Yeah. Because the immediate thing is, I want to see a the real thing and b what other artists have have done. So if you want to do a dragon. Most people will look at things that look like dragons mm -hmm. and other artists who have done dragons. Now, I uh, I got lucky enough to... I know Ian McCaig, who is the art director for lots of things, but he's most famous for Star Wars. That's where it all started. He did Darth Maul and stuff like that. And he has a workshop where he, he basically teaches creativity. Um, and... What he does, it's really interesting. He says, okay, so we're going to come up with a thing. Let's say dragon, right? It's easy enough. So what does a dragon need? We know that there are objective things dragons need. They need wings, right? Whether they're a wyvern or dragon, whatever. They're going to have wings unless they're the well, Western dragons <laughs> have wings. 
They have a uh, breath weapon. They, this one, we're going to say it has horns. We're going to go with four legs, long tail, scales, right? You write all of these things down. Then, uh, kind of set that aside, and you do this sort of free word association or random web searches, and you try and find the most random objects you can. And the way that uh, Ian does it is he just starts pointing at things in the room. He'll be like, okay, so we have a monster energy drink. We have the Elden Ring sword. We have some pens. Uh, we, have, we have these fishes, right? You write all of those down. And then you randomly connect those to the things. And so you have to say, okay, so the fish, they are going to be the horns, right? How are we going to fit that? into horns the monster energy drink that will be the wings you know and it at first you're like uh that's just dumb like how is that gonna fit but you have to break down all of the little elements um so you know the fish they're very shiny they have scales and they have almost a sculpted look to it so you'd say okay well i like that sculpted look and i like that really chromey thing so that'll work for horns right and I'm not taking the shape of the fish. I'm just taking like the texture of the fish. And so right away, you've already got horns that are a little bit different, right? Um, and you had almost no effort to do that. Um, you know, what would you say the Monster Energy Drink was? Wings. Wings. Okay, so you go, okay, Monster Energy Drink. Well, it has these cool little tear things. You could, I mean, torn wings aren't that original, but take that, it's got this little bumpy texture um, what if it had a texture to the whole wing, kind of like shark skin has, that you might not, you might not know what it's for, but it looks like it serves a function. Um, <coughs> some of the styling of the letters, like you just take elements away, uh, you abstract them, and then you put them back into this list that you've made. And by the time you have figured all that out, um, most of the time you will have the one of the most creative ideas you've ever had. And it looks like you're just coming with stuff, coming up with stuff out of nowhere, but it's actually not that much work. It's a step-by-step -step process. Hmm. Um, when he does it, it's amazing. Cause he'll be like, all right, we're doing a star Wars monster mm -hmm. and he'll take like a tennis shoe and turn it into a monster. And it's amazing. Um, so that's my quick follow-up for people who are looking for reference. I wonder always... if he's filmed any of those. He has done. Yeah. And this is very recent. It was like a month ago mm -hmm. that he released them on the Noman Workshop. Okay. And that's just thenomanworkshop.com. Okay. Awesome. Um, he has a few free ones on, on mm -hmm. YouTube you can find. Mm -hmm. um, he's, he's amazing. He's so inspiring. And what, uh, I've met him, but tell everyone his name one more time. Ian McKaig. It's McKaig. Yeah. Uh, I-A-I-N. You introduced him to me at uh, Gen Con one year, I think, or maybe Dragon Con. That's, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. We've been to so many shows. Yeah. But uh, find another question for Steve because I... Oh, wait. Do we have another guest star? No. Well, I, Peter was going to talk about international books. Okay. Mm. So I was going to have him uh, step on for a minute. Okay. If well, he's I'm going to go get... Oh. Um, while you're doing that, I'm okay. going to go get Magellan. Uh, warning. It, Magellan is potentially loud. Sometimes <laughs> he's very quiet. He's a macaw. So, just warning those who might be listening on headphones, when he comes back on, you may want to be aware that there at any point is a potential Magellan will make himself known. So, uh, <laughs> B Money's going to go away, uh, and Brandon will come back. Uh, I'll be in the Brandon persona for a little while, my uh, alter ego, uh, you know, uh, for, for a while. So, And then uh, uh, we'll get questions for Peter and Steve while yes, Brandon's yeah. gone. Yeah, if you Peter, you just, take you just come sit seat. in my seat here. <clears throat> All right. So, while you're sitting down, well... I'll let you do uh, the international books announcement. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> for anyone who didn't see the stream where I was on, um, I'm Brandon's in-house editor and publisher. And one of my many tasks is to, um, I interface with Brandon's agent who um, at Brandon's agency, Joshua is his, is his main agent, and he also has sub-agents working under him. And two of those are Susan and Krista, who, uh, I hope I'm getting her name right. Anyway, Susan and Krista 
pretty sure that's right. Who um, they work with agents in lots of different countries. So, uh, for example, like they have it. There's a local agent in France. There's a local agent in Bulgaria, and then um, so those agents then go out to different publishing companies and say these books are that Brandon is going to be publishing. Those are available to be. Um, to be licensed, so you can put you can do a translation and put them out. So, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of people who are very excited about these four secret projects, and um, I can I can't give any final announcements right now, but I can say that there are uh, there is a publishing company in France. There's also a publishing company in Spain. Um, they will want to do their own announcements all eventually, so I can't reveal yet which publishing companies those are. However, um, both of them have made very serious offers about putting out the four secret projects um, and releasing them simultaneously with their release in the United States. So they will come out the same month. That's, that's the plan currently. And uh, so those will be released in... Um, in French and in Spanish, the same time as they come out in the United States. And the same time, the same month that they're sent out to, to backers. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty exciting. We're also getting, uh, they're definitely working on getting deals with other publishers in, in other countries and other languages. And so uh, I thought that, uh, that, uh, people out there would like to hear this news. Um, hopefully it doesn't cause many of you to cancel your, your orders of the English versions. <laughs> I don't, we don't, we don't yet have details on what sort of cover treatments they're going to use or, or anything like that. So how, uh, how many copies need to happen before like a translation is justified within a certain language? Like, is there a, cause I, for example, I know a lot of people who have more obscure languages that just would love translations, but it's like there's not enough people who like speak Tagalog, for example. Right. Um, but like, there's so this is such a big Kickstarter. Is do you think it's going to go pretty pretty wide as far as languages? Uh, well, eventually? I mean, eventually, yes. I mean, Brandon has published in more than thirty languages, I believe. Thirty-five, I think. Thirty-five. 35. Wow. Yeah. And we keep adding new languages all the time. Um, so it just, it depends on the state of the publishing market mm -hmm. in those countries um, and whether they like, whether the readers there like buying fantasy novels. And um, in, in some places it can actually be difficult to, to have the, uh, have local publishers interested in publishing versions because if the people in that country speak English really well and tend mm -hmm. to just import the books. And I mean, there's lots of bookstores in Europe that just carry the books in English. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's, and then of course the audiobooks and eBooks are just available worldwide. Mm -hmm. And so um in some territories, that's a little bit of a um, an obstacle, mm -hmm. actually. But if there are so many people that just love Brandon's books, then um, eventually there there will be a, a, some critical number of people who want to read it in the local language. Yeah, I know a lot of uh, a lot of my multilingual friends. Like, yeah, English works just fine, right. but they would love a more native. Uh, copy so i was just curious about that yep well i guess we aren't actually going to go to any questions if yes <laughs> you can you can do questions when i take him yeah. back if okay you want. but uh i'm going to bring him in so those who have parrots will notice something about magellan he has begun to itch at his chest mm -hmm. um we think that it is humidity related so we have increased mm -hmm. the humidity in his room and he seems to be itching a lot less. So don't be concerned, don't be too alarmed. Uh, we, we've got Magellan, uh, uh, I have enough experience to know 
how to spot warning signs that he's begun to do a little bit too much itching. So we upped his number of baths and we uh, added humidity to his room. So hopefully that'll work. Um, but here is Magellan, the macaw. Hello. Uh, how are you doing? Yeah. Do you want to do any tricks or are you just too distracted? Do you want to do any tricks? Can you use the force? <laughs> That's a good bird. That's a good bird. Um, so he's been, uh, he's been doing a lot of uh, practice in his various tricks lately. Uh, he's gotten pretty good at a bunch of them. Depends on the mood he's in, whether he'll do his tricks or not. Um, and uh, it's not really related to how hungry he is. It's more just related to how playful he is, whether he wants to. Uh, these days he's been... Uh, he'll pick certain times, and he'll just love doing his tricks, and other times he'll just stare at you. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. And he's gotten better at not eating my buttons. We've been working on him to not do that. So he still loves buttons, but he knows not to eat the buttons on my shirts. Well, he doesn't know. He tries sometimes, but he understands a little bit better that he can't have those. Do you want to do... Are you a Dragon. 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 Going to do it? Dragon. Maybe a little bit of stage fright. Well, this is just the now suddenly, watching. suddenly. What are you doing? You can't go on my shoulder. They can't see you if you're on my shoulder. No, he should be okay. And we can always adjust if we need to. No, it's okay. Um, so uh, we, let's wait while I have Magellan. I just kind of have to be focused on Magellan. So we'll do like two giveaways in a row when I get back or something like that. And we still um, have an hour. Yeah, we so. still have an hour. So here's Magellan the Macaw. Um, any questions for Magellan the Macaw? Uh, how old is he? Magellan is three. So still a child in Macaw turns. They, um, they don't uh, um, hit sexual maturity until, depends on the bird, but it's like four to six. Um, can he say I am a stick yet? We haven't taught him I'm a stick. He says peekaboo now. Uh, that's the new one. Um, depends on whether he'll play. He'll actually play peekaboo. He'll peek out and say it. But depends on how he's feeling at the moment. Um, yeah. How are you feeling? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And uh, what mm -hmm. AVR power does Magellan grant? Uh, Magellan grants the ability to be very distracted. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a very that useful sounds like a AVR power, but uh, indeed, you get distracted That's very easily. Yes. I never realized I had mm. a superpower. He, uh, <laughs> he, he wants you to scratch him um, and scratch his head, and so he will sometimes be quite vocal about the fact that he wants some scratches. And why is he named Magellan? Um, because we wanted an explorer-themed explorer name for him as we were building the, the lair, the, uh, the thing I joke is an underground supervillain lair. It's actually themed toward an old-school explorer's club. Um, and so we, have, uh, we wanted a, a thing. And plus, it allows him to have the nickname Jello, and he's a Jello bird. Is he, a Jello a, bird. is he offended that he's referred to as a chicken? Uh, I don't know. I don't think he's ever met a chicken, so um, I think he is, he is not a racist bird, and he likes chickens, so he considers it a, 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 an honor to be called a chicken. Um, does he have a favorite toy or a favorite fruit? Uh, his favorite fruit is probably grapes. Um, he'll eat an apple, but uh, grapes are where he kind of goes crazy for. Um, and um, a favorite toy, he is very destructive. If you don't know about macaws, even for parrots, they're very destructive. He prefers metal. So I'll buy him these nice wooden toys that the parrots are supposed to chew through the blocks on the toys. Um, and then they uh, are supposed to just love that. Him, I hang them up, and he bites through the chain links on the top and drops the toy to the ground. So... He really likes metal toys. He loves breaking anything metal. He loves undoing screws. Loves undoing screws. If you just give him a wall of screws, he'll sit there and undo them and drop them to the ground. So he likes that quite a bit. Do you have to be careful about the type of metal that's like soft enough that they don't, he doesn't actually hurt himself? Uh, he, no. No, he's uh, just... No, he is, 
Uh, yeah, he is very capable of... Uh, he has ended up with a beak ring occasionally by biting through a metal ring on one of his toys, and then he gets stuck on his beak, and you have to uh, pull it off. Um, but, yeah, he's done that a couple times. Um, let's see. Anything else? Um, oh, hey, I should mention, it does, if anyone knows of a good avian um, vet in Salt Lake City, our vet, uh, during COVID, decided to change their occupation uh, the way they were doing it and is no longer available. Uh, and so we need a new avian pet, uh, avian doctor. Um, I want to make sure that it's not, sometimes when a parrot is itching, it's because of um, a pest, um, which I think it's probably humidity, just knowing, but it's possible. So we want to take him in. Plus, it's good to have a good avian vet anyway. So people tell me who you use in Salt Lake if you have uh, parrots, who you take your parrot to. Uh, we don't have one, I think, in Utah Valley, but if there happens to be one, let me know. So watch that. If the, the, the moderator folks are watching it, grab the names for me if you would. Well, there's an avian vet on the stream, but they're in Australia. They're in Australia. <laughs> um, um, great parrots in Australia. My, um, my second parrot was an Australian parrot. I really like... Uh, Aaron K says SLC Parish Creek or Parish Creek is an excellent, and they took their Amazon there. So okay, okay, that's good. Yeah, so. Wasatch Exotic Pet Care as well. We've got we've heard, does Wasatch Exotic Pet? Has someone been to Wasatch uh, Exotic Pet? I just want to know if someone has gone. I know that Wasatch that there is Wasatch Exotic Pet, but I want to know is there an actual avian specialist there? Like I, I'm just curious because uh, we haven't actually taken the plunge and gone up to find them because we had a vet for a while. Uh, anyway, uh, any other questions for or about Magellan here before I take him back? Uh, Dallin has a question for Magellan. My son, did you really have a question? Yeah. What's your question? Bananas? No. I want him. Oh, okay. It's a unique form of question. Mm -hmm. um, some people are wondering, Steve, if you can occasionally just show oh, the drawing yeah. you're working on. Um, I don't know if you could actually even see it. It's really light right now. Mm. It is pretty light. You can see it. I adjusted the exposure. so uh, mm. that's, that's going really well. Why, thank you. Yeah, I look forward and, to winning that. <laughs> so, and just the quick thing is like, um, even if I was just concentrating on it for an hour, it wouldn't be done. And since we're going to be chatting and stuff, uh, I'll, I'll sketch as, uh, as we go, but I will finish it at home oh. and it will be much more polished mm. for, uh, for the giveaway. Um, now, let's get a question from the chat before I take Mr. Magellan home. Uh, being just, a very good bird. Yeah. You might be able to be on streams more often. Yeah. Now that, now, that you're, uh, now that you're mellowing just a little bit, but who knows? Your, yeah. your, your bird teenage years are coming very soon. <laughs> who knows? Uh, How well does Jello interact with uh, your other celebrity guests? Uh, he interacts very well. He keeps trying to talk to the cats and is uh -huh. offended they won't talk back. Every time they come in, he's like, hello, hello. And then they won't say hello to him. And he, if you don't say hello back, he will just keep repeating it until you do. Um, so he very much likes interaction. Um, they, uh, Jason Lyons wants to know if he's scared of anything. Magellan? Mm -hmm. He's scared of everything. Oh. He's, uh, he's yeah, you hear that, person. Kathy? So he is, uh, he, is, he is a bit nervous. He's actually um, a little... No, all three of my parents uh, have been pretty nervous. Uh, he, it's more noticeable because of how big he is. Um, but... Let's, uh, let's get you down here, bud. Come on. Come on. Oh, man, you dropped seed all over me. Come on. Come on. Good bird. Good bird. All right. So, no, you can't go back immediately back up. I know you want to. Come on. Come on. So, yeah. So, there we are. There's celebrity guest number, number five is Magellan. Do you need scritches? you want scritches? You're just too distracted. So, uh, someday, maybe he will be expert enough to play peekaboo or something on screen. But these days, he's just kind of nervous by the fact that there's so many people around, huh? Okay. Well, I will leave uh, for a little bit and be back. Bye, Brandon. Mm. Should we do a giveaway? Yeah, let's do a giveaway. You want to just go show it over there? Okay. Our next giveaway is of the first ideal set. So, there's the... Uh, Life Before Death shirt, the Strength Before Weakness shirt, and the Journey Before Destination shirt with our Journey Before Destination socks and a sticker pack of all three of the ideals. So uh, the 
the keyword is ideal uh, in chat. So say that and we'll close it in just a few minutes. Yeah, we'll close it at five minutes, 4.15 or okay. so. Okay, yep, in about five minutes. And uh, Peter, did you want to come back? So let us know what questions you have for Peter and Steve since uh, we have them for a few minutes. Uh, though finding a question in the uh, stream of ideals will be yeah. a little difficult. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe you two can just chat. Do you have any questions sure. for each other? I haven't really sat down and talked with you very much. It's true. We've, <laughs> we've played magic. Uh, I think, haven't we? Well, <laughs> probably not. But we've watched a few movies at least in the uh, yeah in the Windrunner. Yeah. Um, Were you there for uh, Mad Max? Yeah, Fury Road. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, such okay. a good movie. Oh, and in in that theater. In that it's theater. Amazing. Thing. Yeah. Like uh, the speakers, the bass. My goodness. Yeah. Uh, I mean, everyone thought that the seats were rumble seats because. The whole place was rumbling, but yeah. it was just the speakers. When the when the like the cars would drive by and stuff, you you like genuinely were like, is there like <laughs> they're in here? They feel like they're in here. Yeah, uh, it's actually been kind of the challenge of like, what do we watch in this theater? Because it's it's so impressive that you have to like find. It's almost like it's a special occasion thing. You have to <laughs> right. find the right yeah. movie. We're we're trying to think of what we want to do next, and um, one of our candidates is. One of the Blade Runners, um, probably the new one, just because less people have seen it. But yeah. uh, the old one's such a classic. Uh, what's the favorite thing you have seen in there? Oh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, we just we we watch one in there every week. So nice, yeah. nice. Last one I saw was um, Spider-Man No Way Home, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I, so like I, I, my art career, it all started with comic books. And in fact, it's, um, it started with the Batman, Michael Keaton movies. And I really wanted to see it again, but my parents didn't want to see it again. Not because they didn't like it, but it's like, you don't go to a movie over and over again. So I got the comic book, the film adaptation, and that started my journey. The very first... Uh, First comics I read were uh, Nightcrawler Special Limited Edition, but the first thing I bought with my own lawnmower money was Doctor Strange. And so mm. anything with Doctor Strange in it, it's I just love. He's he's such a great character. That's true. Well, friend is very quick. I am back. So uh, if you have other questions uh, for Peter, uh, you can always. Uh, maybe we'll, you can start a Reddit thread, Peter, about it, or sure. they can just email them to us and stuff. Um, let's see where we are. We have 45 minutes left, and we are at $41,468,000. All right. Um, this is pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, I do have one other child here. Joel, are you here? He ran off. Oh, we have, we have one more uh, uh, celebrity guest here. Uh, Joel, do you want to be on or not? He doesn't know. He's, uh, he's uh, not sure if he wants to be on stream or not. Uh, why don't you come down and sit down? They've, you've been on stream before. They've all seen you. Um, oh, Joel has guy. brought. Oh, wow. <laughs> he has brought the ghee. Where did the calling him the ghee come from? Uh, Aya. Aya, uh, Joel's cousin. So this... Um, is Joel, Joel's leopard gecko. Um, leopard geckos are amazing pets. They look like they have little cute faces like little cats. Um, and uh, they have like these little cat, cat eyes and these little permanent smirks. Um, and Joel wanted, uh, when, when he got, they get a pet when they turn 10, he wanted this uh, within reason. Um, and we encouraged him toward, because we already have a cat that's a house cat, uh, that's everybody's cat that Oliver showed off. So um, this is Leopard Gecko. So if you have questions for Joel or the Gee, um, and his actual name, Joel? Echo the Gecko. Echo the Gecko. If you have a name for Echo or uh, for Joel, um, then feel free to ask them. 
Um, we just thought, you know, people like seeing pets. There he goes. He can go on the table. It's okay. Um, they are so interesting as, uh, as little pets. Um, they're very good at uh, just kind of hanging out, right, Joel? He just kind of hangs out with you. Nope. Mm-hmm. Helps me do my homework. Helps you do your homework. Yep, that's that's the that's the value of a gi. Yep. Mm-hmm. Joel is now uh, fourteen, mm-hmm. so <laughs> he's faster than he looks like he would be, and I bet that's yep. not even doing anything. <laughs> yep. But he is so cute. He is so cute. Leopard geckos are, and he's also very easy. When I was a kid, I wish I'd known how good a pet leopard geckos were. I had hamsters, and hamsters turned out to be pretty mediocre pets. I know there are some people who love their hamsters who know how to take care of them. I'll say they're mediocre pets for a young person who doesn't know what they're doing. Uh, Whereas a leopard gecko is really calm, doesn't run away, doesn't bite you, likes kind of hanging out with people. Uh, As we joke, he just considers Joel a warm stick to sit on. Um, and thinks, this is a nice stick. I'll just stay here. Uh, Joel, people are wondering if you have any, uh, what your favorite fantasy novels are, besides your dad's. I like Fablehaven. I've been reading Scythe recently. It's, uh... Yeah, Neil Shustrom and Scythe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've read, um, what have I read? We really like the Amulet books. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Those were... uh, the graphic novels. Those are fantastic if people are uh, looking for a graphic novel. Uh, you really liked Wings of Fire for a number of years? That was like... Yep. That was like three or four years ago mm-hmm. that you were reading those a lot. I like Aragon, too. Yep. Aragorn. Aragon. Aragon. He's been reading Aragon lately by our good friend Christopher. So there we are. Thanks for stopping by, Joel. And off goes the gee. And uh, do you want to close our contest? Yes. Thank you for participating. Mm. Um, Michael will pick the winner, and I will try and find it in the chat. It's right here. I got it. C. Matt Griffin. C. Matt Griffin. Congratulations. C. Matt Griffin. Uh, Please email us at contest at brandonsanderson.com. You know the drill by now. (laughs) So. I had a flying gecko. uh, Did you? At about Joel's age. Mm. Yeah. Uh, They are fantastic pets. Yeah. And they, they kind of sparked a lot of interest in science because they have the, like the, the flying geckos and some of the other geckos, they stick to things. And I always thought it was like suction cups when, yeah. I, was, when I was 10. But they, they have these little electrostatic pads. Wow. So uh, they don't need a thing that uh, can be sucked to to stick to things. You know, they're, you know, speaking of Spider-Man, they're nature's Spider-Man. Uh, Adam, I just want to let you know the red light is blinking on that, uh, which probably means on, uh, on that one, which means we're on battery power yep, running low. Does. So uh, just giving you a warning I there. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so did, do you have any pets now? I have two cats uh-huh. that are extremely well behaved, but that doesn't mean I don't think they're jerks. Mm. They, they're cats. Know, they're cats. Yeah. Uh, we have a fish tank, a marine fish tank that has probably about 50 fish in it at this point. Um, and we have a banana ball python who is super cute. So Ball pythons are also good pets. If you like really the is. feeling of holding a snake, they're, they're great. And they're <laughs> remark like you kind of think snakes mm-hmm. uh, might be a little twitchy or whatever, and mm-hmm. there are varieties that are, but uh, we call him our snake ambassador because even people that we know who, like they don't even want to come in our house if they know we have mm-hmm. a snake. Eventually, they warm up to him and get over uh, any problems that they had with snakes because he's just so, just nice and gentle and cute. He's like he's like pink and yellow. Um, we're we're building him a new habitat, and I totally geeked out. Cat was like, you know, I don't know how to how to style this. I'm going to go bioactive, which means you build, mm-hmm. uh, you put real plants in it, you put real like you put insects in it, you put all the things that the ecosystem needs so that it takes care of itself. Um, but we're going with this big four foot by three foot by three foot enclosure. And Kat's like, you know, can I get some help with this? It's a, it's a big project. And uh, I came upstairs two days later <laughs> with, a, uh, with a prototype of a 3D printed Dagobah Yoda hut. <laughs> and I'm like, so this is just his hide. Uh-huh. We're also going to have 
the swamp with the X-Wing coming out of it. That's his water dish. Then his cold hide is going to be the Sith cave. Or They just call it the cave of evil. It doesn't mm. actually have a interesting name. But And then um, we've got the little plants growing out. And even though it's not canonically Dagobah, I'm going to have like crashed TIE fighters that it's growing out of the, the window hole. And so like I've, I've totally nerded out. This is the danger of asking the artist, hey, can you come up with a, a project idea? And yeah. Kat has all, she's all but learned not to mm-hmm. ask because she knows I'll do it and she'll have to rein me in. The big project we're doing right now is we're actually designing a house and I'll be like, okay, this is my idea for our library. And she's like, it's three stories, Steve. Is our house going to be three stories? Also, that's the budget for the whole house. Can we just, you know, I like the idea of having a library, but seriously, just bring it back. We just need a regular room that will hold our books. Um, but it's really fun. <laughs> Kathy, I think, is here. Kathy is Thor. here. Oh, just Kat, is Kathy brought somebody? I brought someone. Okay. Uh, why don't you come sit in my seat? Because Steve's still drawing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh. You brought He's like, oh, yeah, I am. He's locked away until we're ready for it. Okay. By the way, thank you so much for the compliment. Yeah. yeah. I bring my special celebrity guests, and that's what my husband does. I don't think she knows about yeah. it. Everybody thinks you have her. Nope, uh, it was Jordan. <laughs> oh, she doesn't know about it. She doesn't it. know about it. Oh, And she's not listening. <laughs> so right. here we go. <laughs> this is... Thor. What's his full name? His his Nor name is Thor Hates David Tennant. <laughs> <laughs> but why? <laughs> because my husband said if I got a kitten, its name had to be I Hate David Tennant. So we changed his name to Thor Hates David Tennant. Because she wasn't willing to, to put herself through that, probably. Yeah. <laughs> this is how they keep Kathy from getting too many cats, is the names must be things that are, uh, yeah. Though, to be fair... Jordan told me if I got a fourth cat, it had to be named Pepsi is better than Coke. And Thor mm. brought home a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and now that you've had Pepsi, cats. you know it's true now, right? <laughs> but the name was named Jack-Jack, so <laughs> he only visits half the time. And Thor likes to come to the Dragon Steel offices and solicit pets from employees. Uh, and I don't think people are understanding that you having to name a cat, you hate David Tennant, is a punishment for how much you love David Because I love Doctor Who. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this was how Jordo tried to keep her, my brother Jordan, <laughs> okay. from, uh, from getting a third cat, but didn't work. Yep, and he's friends with Pinecone. They play hide-and-seek in the backyard of Brandon's house. And I think we have a little bit of time left for him if anyone has a question. Yes. He's, um, <laughs> he's, he's got one of my cats has the I don't realize I have claws problem as well. Yes. <laughs> I think he knows he has them and is using them on purpose. <laughs> Uh, they say Thor you. is worthy. <laughs> and can he have a cameo in the Cosmere? Well, he's on the book that he Let's go ahead and have him. Yeah, you can, you can <laughs> take him. He doesn't he's, look. Uh, he's getting squirrely. <laughs> so, oh, yep. sorry. Oh, no, you're okay. I'm just oh, going to go can you fix that camera? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> 35 minutes left. 35 minutes. So what are the thoughts of, like, at five minutes, it's just going to spike because of all the folks who want to be last. <laughs> to be last, it will probably spike. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, so we've got another another thing to give away here. Yes. <clears throat> what are we giving away this time? The Skyward Flight Bundle. And oh. the T-shirts actually just barely showed up. Oh. Like, Ten minutes ago. So. <laughs> uh, you're not on camera, so let's let Brandon show yeah. up. Yep. So these are the new T-shirts. <clears throat> they uh. just arrived. <clears throat> so- Dallin is really excited because he came up with Boom Slug. And now we've got a Boom Slug shirt, so. The squishies have not yet. They were supposed to come today. Otherwise, I'd be displaying the squishy. Mm-hmm. But you'll get the Boom Slug squishy. You'll get a Boom Slug well. squishy and the stickers and a copy of the book. Signed and numbered and mm-hmm. signed by Brandon and Jancy. So what do they type for this one? Skyward. Skyward. And you could win the bundle. And at 4.30 Mountain Daylight, five minutes, we will announce a winner. Okay. Or whenever the question is done. But that's, yep. yeah, mm-hmm. that's when we'll pull the, pull the winner. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, any other questions? Let me go back. 
Um, can Steve say anything about the works he's done on the most recent Magic set? I love the art and the charms revealed so far. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, what can you say about new whatever it's called? I, I can talk about the art. I don't. I can't talk too much about the set because they are just revealing it. So mm -hmm. the for the people who aren't familiar, it's another mad, it's a new Magic the Gathering set with a kind of 1920s prohibition theme, but of course very magic. Yes. So there's Art Deco, but also magic. Yeah. So yeah. Um, and it's it's really it's really interesting. Um, you'll learn more about it. Uh, I think they've already talked about it. it's it's kind of a competing crime families, right? And so each of the charms represent or, or are charms for one of those mm -hmm. uh, three color families and uh, it was a really interesting design process because the art director um, this is probably not too much of a spoiler at this point but I, I did do all five charms I did the whole cycle they haven't shown the last two yet so I hope that this doesn't get me fired but I think it's assumed at this point uh, and we, we talked about a lot of different things because what we wanted was kind of a calling card for these crime families. And so it's got that prohibition theme. So one of the first things that I, I pitched was, well, what if we did kind of this, like, you know, like bottles of a thing they haven't announced yet for this set? I think, I think they may have, but just in case. Um, and then you kind of go with that speakeasy theme where you have these, these bottles um, they did announce that, so okay, okay, yeah. good. <laughs> uh, you're not, you're not. At least I know about it, and I haven't gotten any spoilers behind the scenes on this set. So okay, so they have they have mana that is liquefied in bottles. Mm -hmm. They and they 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 sell it. They trade it. That's the prohibition mm -hmm. thing. Is that they have these underground channels to get magic mm -hmm. in liquid form, and so we we talked about that, and that was really interesting, and uh, that evolved into impossible bottles right where like the 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 crime family that deals in secrets and stuff they have a bottle that has a a puzzle lock inside of it there's no way you could get in it and then the vampire family had a their calling card was a bottle where a a knife and fangs were going through the bottle inexplicably and not not leaking not breaking um and it's it's interesting because we kept getting wilder and wilder ideas for how to represent this. And then it kind of came back down because we're like, but these mana symbol or the, the crime family symbols are so well done, so cool that we really want to showcase them. And uh, talking with the art director, she was pouring through all of the other art descriptions and she's like, as cool as these ideas are, we really want to show these symbols and most of the other cards, they're they're kind of secondary, right? They'll be they'll be on a on a character or something, but these are the only cards where it's front and center. And uh, so we we kind of pulled all the way back to we're just gonna fancy up the symbols as much as we can. So uh, my favorite has spoiled or previewed, and it's the Obscura Charm. That's white, black, blue, and it's a it's. A, a box of glass with floating eyeballs in it. And that was just really fun to paint. Uh, is that is that kind of what the question? Yeah, that's, I think that's okay. what they wanted to know. <laughs> kind of the process of how we arrived at that. Uh, another question for you, specifically about the drawing that you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Zedekiah says, um, or wants to know if you typically start all your drawings uh, with a character's face or what made you start with the helm? for this sketch? Ah, so for this one, it's that mostly that's uh, the iconic thing that is gonna be most recognizable. And so I'm I'm not gonna go too much further than head and shoulders. Uh, the way I compose things depends on what it's gonna be. So if it's, a, if it's a scene, then usually it will just be a bunch of blobby things that represent where I want visual weight to be. Uh, so half the time when I'm doing thumbnail sketches, I don't even know what it is. I don't know that this is going to be a character. I just know I want a thing here and I want a thing there. And uh, particularly when you're composing to a format like a book cover where you've got a title, you know, you have to have this, you got a, you got the author's name, and then you need to make the space in between work with those elements that are already there and still be interesting, but not 
not busy with uh, with the words and stuff. So when I'm doing a character, I will start with either, well, it again, it depends. For like a high action pose, I'll usually start with the chest. Like I'll just put a little thing in the chest because that's kind of where the center of mass is gonna be and then the limbs go around it. If it's a stoic pose, I start with feet because um, that's, th that's where they're planted and then I kind of work my way up. Uh, and then if it's gonna be something more close up, then yeah, it usually is the, the head. Um, do we have a special guest back there? Oh, I was gonna have him come yeah. on in about 10 minutes. Oh. Uh, or we can do it now. We, we have three more special guests. Oh, okay. Uh, I was thinking only on one. Tonight. Okay, so, so yes, we do. Yes, so we have All a special right. guest. Uh, and we've closed the giveaway. Yep, and, and we closed the giveaway. Closed and the, the giveaway. winner is Christine Ludwell. You know the drill. Email us at contest at brandonsanderson.com. Congratulations. So, um, yes, uh, we have... <laughs> Hello. <laughs> My name is E Money. <laughs> and I was supposed to be accompanied by my furry publicist, but she uh, is under the bed and refuses to come out. <laughs> she got scared by the lopen, and so uh, mm -hmm. I even tried jumping on the bed to scare her out from under the bed. It didn't work. <laughs> so unfortunately, I, uh, my publicist is not here. You don't get to see Closet Kitten. No. Uh, I know people were wanting to see Closet Kitten. I we'll know. have fi find another time. For those who don't know, this is the cat that, as a kitten, rode in the wheel well, we're pretty sure, or something. Or the bumper or something. She was we don't in, know. I think, the bumper. Uh, yeah. Emma, in a Adam Jane and Adam's Jane's garage. garage. They opened the garage door, thought she got out, she was a feral, but then she appeared at our house, uh, now, hiding under our grill. That was the next place that Jane drove after yes. she She drove here, left. and so somehow this cat rode here, hid under our grill, Got tamed by Emily after we got after months. Months. We got a trap and, and from Kathy the went. police, and we knew that if we took her to the pound, she was not a friendly kitten, and that uh, she would uh, probably not get adopted. Uh, she was very, very frightened, uh, and so Emily put her, let her live in the closet and uh, charmed and tamed her over a period of like six months, and now she's delightful she'll come she uh loves to sleep on emily she will even come and get in my lap and have me pet her which is remarkable for uh usually Farrell. when he's in the middle of writing in and the middle of writing you know want to have a cat on his computer but, uh know. but she is still very scared of a lot of things yep so so and instead e-money is here yes mm -hmm. here i am so mm. i came i came to apologize for my publicist uh, that's right. I'm I'm out of costume. Um, yeah. I'm I'm in my uh, I'm hiding as my alter ego, my mild mannered alter ego to keep the crowds away. Um, it's probably a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you see the full outfit I had on? I did. Nah. It, it was very inspiring, yes. as you can tell. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. We should have uh, gotten a book and put it on a gold chain and put it around your neck because yeah, that's what you, you love. Um, so, uh, questions for e money. <laughs> Or comments or questions for me. I'm just checking the... Uh, uh, Eric Peter uh, says B-Money needs to upgrade E-Money's ring. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I, We're not ring people. No. We I, really aren't. I really do. I have a diamond he gave me when we got mm -hmm. engaged, but I don't wear it because it catches on things. And so I actually have a ring that Magellan bit. And mm. so now it's no longer round and it's hard to take off. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So. We're, not, uh, we're not jewelry people that much. Um, that's... You know, that's why I had to put a magic card around my neck because, you know, that's the closest I have is that, so. Uh, Zana Reed wants to know if you are ever going to consider publishing a book of your own. Me? Um, or E-Money, whichever one is to. more comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh E-Money. E-Money would totally publish a book. It would be her memoirs mm. of being rich and famous and having lots of pets. Yes. So... I don't know. I'd have to write one first if I mm. wanted to publish one. So. Uh, a ton of people are wondering about your scarf and where you got it. Oh, my scarf. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually from Australia. <laughs> um, when we went to Perth to SwanCon years and years ago, we both bought Australian hats, and this scarf was around my, what do they call the Australian hats? Uh, the, a Kubra. Yeah. Mine was an Akubra. I don't know if yours was an Akubra. Anyway, mm -hmm. so this scarf was around the bottom, and I needed something flashy, so I took it off. So there you go. Um, what are you reading right now? 
What am I reading right now? Am I reading anything right now? Uh, I don't know. Last time I you were on the stream, you talked about some of the things you I read, had just I read. I talked about S.K. Alley that I just finished. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't read anything for a little while. Yeah, for a couple days. I mean, that's, other that's than remarkable. picture books that I mm -hmm. picked up this morning when I was helping Dallin clean his room. Did you read uh, Did you read the new um, uh, Narwhal and Jelly book that Dallin got? I didn't. Ah. I did read um, the Stormlight 5 prologue this morning. Oh, yes, the Stormlight 5 prologue. Uh, if I didn't mention it, you can read that uh, as a kind of thank you. Uh, it is an early draft, but now you have all five of the the, the shots from uh, that one day that started the very first book of Stormlight. So um, I was happy to be able to get that to you. All right. Well, I guess we'll let Steve come back yep. uh, for a little bit. Thank you, E-Money. Goodbye. <laughs> um, and uh, Steve will come back. And then we have... Uh, we have two more celebrity guests that we're going to have to squeeze in, in the last 20 minutes, right? Do we have two more, Lex? Yes. Yes, two more. Oh, um, okay. Lex has two separate celebrity guests that she is publicist for. <laughs> uh, so um, I, want, I, should, I should sign one of these as B-Money. <laughs> we could do a giveaway for that, uh, and uh, and we could give that away. I'm going to sign one of these. <clears throat> uh, someone hand me my uh, my my black lotus. I have to put it on and get into character. Just the black <laughs> lotus. Uh, we'll just we'll just put the black lotus on, um, and uh, then there we go. Now now I'm now I'm back now I'm back in character in my sunglasses. They're, that way they can. I don't need the rings though. They are. Um, so there we are. Yeah, sunglasses over my glasses. How is B Money's signature going to look? Ooh. It's going to be like a giant B, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. B and a money sign. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, there you go. There, you go. Yeah. there it is. Yes, it's just B and a dollar sign. Yeah. Oh, yeah. B Money. And a squiggle. Yes, and a squiggle. And a Need squiggle. Need a squiggle. Uh, a squiggle. So there we are. We have uh, we. The, the, the one and only signed Words of Radiance. Uh, what should our give a word Signed uh, by B Money. Uh, how about money? Money. Okay, <laughs> there it is. Uh, <laughs> we'll close this in five minutes or so. And uh, mm -hmm. how many more giveaways do we have? Uh, I've got like three. three. We've got like and three. And Steve's. So, okay, we're not going to do five minutes. We're going to close this one in two or three minutes. Okay, <laughs> close this one in two minutes. Write money. And... Uh, and uh, not be money, just do money. Just do money, because <laughs> we realize that if we ha ask people to do dashes and things, that it's going to be. Mm. Um, so, Adam, you've been playing Elden Ring, right? Oh my word! What's what's your build? I, uh, I'm warrior. You're warrior. And I don't even know if I can say I am playing Elden Ring. Cause, okay. Uh, it's. it's you? I've been no. I've been working so much that I've not yeah, been this able to month, play it. So Adam needs to take um, a month off. Uh, but I love the game. It is mm. great. It's beautiful. It's hard. I like it. <laughs> So yeah, I've only been I've only played once, one day worth. But. And what did you uh, set up as? Well, obviously the wretch. Oh, come on. oh, geez, yeah, I'm not that hardcore. Wretch and no no gift. That's the way to play. And uh, then uh, second one, second time I'll play. Oh yeah, second time like you can do that. How many times did you die in the first hour? You think? Uh, not very many. Uh, no, I did just fine the first hour. Uh, where the first place I died, I died like so four or five times to the dragon before I killed that. Um, um, where did I... Which dragon are you talking about? So I came out of the main place, yeah. the first thing, and I went right down into a swamp, okay. and there was a dragon yeah. there. Uh, and that took a few cut tries to kill. And then there was, a, there was a giant, a zombie giant, down to the left, and he took three, three or four tries to kill. Um, but I, the, the first hour, I kind of... I went... I got out... I, I've played Dark Souls games a lot, so I went out and went and found some soldiers... Because as a uh, as a wretch, I only had a club and no clothing mm -hmm. and no armor, and I killed soldiers for a little while um, until I got a sword, mm. um, and I found one piece of armor, some gauntlets. So I was running around naked except for a pair of gauntlets. But then I got a sword. I, I prefer swords to clubs, though I kept the club in case I need um, that. That's better on some things. And then mm. by then I'd gotten the horse. Um, and so I went back and then I killed the dragon and then I killed the giant. Uh, oh, the one that killed me the most was probably the, uh, the, the knight on the, the, um, on the horse. Mm -hmm. uh, it took me a little bit to get the horse mechanics going, uh, to figure out how to fight on a horse, though I really like it. It's a nice addition. 
Uh, and so then Are I you beat, talking about the big one with the golden shield? Yeah. That one? Oh, wow. I haven't even tried him yet. So then I beat that. Uh, still naked. I did have, uh, I did have gauntlets. Um, and then I, after b- defeating those, I got teleported to a place with a bunch of, uh, by opening a chest with a bunch of wizards. And I fought through those wizards until the lady opened the round table thing for mm. me. I went there, and then I teleported from that and uh, ended up finding, after killing the dragon, a place with a, with a giant troll that kind of had the similar attack set to the giant I'd fought before, and I killed him. Um, and then I decided maybe I'd progress the main story a little bit, and uh, so I went up the path that the glowing lights were showing me toward. Mm. Uh, so that's that's where. Did I you um, defeat the first boss that's supposed to kill you, or did you? No, I got. I that? did not. I've never managed in any Dark Souls to, to beat those guys. Uh, the only one I've ever beaten is uh, the one in uh, Bloodborne, and that was after I beat the game, reset, and then just wanted to try it, and it took me a few hours. Yeah. I don't um, know if you would have liked that because it probably yeah. would have made you a little overpowered and. Because uh, yeah. you get the special sh- uh, shield and sword. Well, I'm not... Uh, so I, I put certain requirements on myself for, mm-hmm. for Souls games. So this one, I'm not going to use shields too mm-hmm. easy. I have to dodge. Uh, dodging is a uh, little more... And I'm not going to use magic. So no, I'm going to do a no magic, no shield. And the only weapons I'm going to use are ones that I get off of enemies I've killed. Mm. Uh, and so that'll, that'll keep me... Uh, in check for a little while and know what we call Michaeling up that I got from Alan. No, just going out, getting souls and leveling up. Uh, so you're not going to go uh, kill the suicidal chicken or whatever it is? Yeah, I don't, If you've heard about that? I haven't, but no, no leveling up. Level up very rarely um, and only, you know, when you feel like you're going to fight a boss, level up right before the boss, yeah. maybe a few times or something. I'm still probably level, so I started as the wretch at level one. one I'm probably yeah. level 10 um, right now. Um, uh, and so... Uh, I'm at the first named boss. I got to that, got killed by that, and I'm like, all right, I probably don't want to try this tonight. It's like 5 a.m. Yeah, I I watched a video, just Mm -hmm. a quick like ending snippet of it, but it was a level one wretch uh, getting Margit or killing Margit, and I thought that was very impressive. You can do that with most Souls games. You can do As long as you know their moves. You know their moveset. Uh, Do we have special guests? Aya, did you want to come? Or we have a giveaway. Yeah, we winner. do have a giveaway winner. Okay. So Sailor Twilight, congratulations. So let's get the next two giveaways and do a, the same word. Can we tr- pull two names from one giveaway or is that too complicated? I'm not sure if we can. We can? Yes. yes. Okay. So we'll pull two names from the next one. So we have both of those giveaways. Okay. Aya, uh, my niece, also wanted to show. So we're going to do two celebrities in a row. We're going to do Aya's and then we're going to do Lex's first one. Um, so Aya, come on over. Uh, Aya, Aya wanted to join us. Um, so this is my niece Aya uh, with uh, with her celebrity guest. My exclusive pet. <laughs> Your exclusive pet. Actually, it's not mine. Yes, Aya um, has brought the pigeon. Yep. Um, the pigeon is uh, is is quite the uh, quite the character in our in our our home. Uh, Aya actually and her family lived with us when COVID started. Uh, Aya's uh, parents both are immunocompromised. So uh, we decided to quarantine together, and now the housing thing is just insane. So um, they've been living with us for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. So if you have questions for the pigeon or for Aya, um, you may go ahead and throw those at us. Um, We are at 15 minutes, so let's do one question. Uh, for Aya, who's never been on the screen, the stream before, have you, Aya? Oh, you no. did. You were, you I were, the you were the squirrel on our stream uh, last year. Um, Where all the animals invaded. Yes, when all the, the you were the squirrel. In the Captain America suit. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Pasta Brain wants to know what the pigeon's name is. The pigeon. Does the pigeon have a name? Do you want to name the pigeon? Yes. Like, don't let the pigeon drive the bus. It's yes, from it, the book, Don't Let the Pigeon Drive the Bus. And mm-hmm. They just call him the pigeon. The pigeon. We should put, here, throw the pigeon over here to me. Let's add the pigeon to our streaming uh, thing. Uh, yeah. Don't let the pigeon wield the sword. <laughs> um, <laughs> one of the funniest things, uh, so uh, this is by, what's his name, Mo Willems, I mm-hmm. think is his name. Um, when I was, the first time I ever visited Bad Robot, which is, they were working on the star, first Star Wars movie. Uh, and I've done some work with Bad Robot and things like that. It's been, it was very fun. Uh, they have a little thing where you can, s- while you're in the waiting room, sketch. And Mo Williams had obviously visited because they had 
posted on the wall, don't let the pigeon wield the lightsaber. And it was the pigeon with a lightsaber hiding it behind his back. Uh, he had, he'd drawn a picture of that. It was pretty funny. All right. Thank you, Aya. Um, all right. Let's do two gifts. And then we'll have Lex on. Okay. So, or two giveaways. We're going to do two giveaways at the same time. And I forgot to grab the, this. Yes. So we'll do the keyword will be Cosmere because they're both Cosmere related. Yes. C-O-S-M-E-R-E. Yes. Still only write it once or you yeah. will be disqualified, but we'll yeah. pick two winners. So there's a Bridge 4 set with all the Bridge 4 items we sell in the store and a Mistborn set, which I'd love it if Brandon and Steve could sign... Uh, we've got uh, Steve's VIN poster. Ooh, we'll Steve that we'll sign. And Brandon sign, and then we have the final Empire map. That we'll okay. With it as well. um, yes, yes. All right. Um, so I'll give you that one, and if you can sign that Yes, one, I'll need a Sharpie um, to yeah. sign this, because these pens are not going to work uh, for that, I don't think. Well, maybe. Would they work pe if these pens? If you've got a... A gold or silver Sharpie. That's better. better. Yeah. Okay. Let's grab a Sharpie. Uh, but Got somebody on it. Go ahead and write Cosmere. Um, we are we're approaching ten minutes. While we do this, why don't we have Lex come over with a with a guest? So we have something special. Uh, Lex is one of our employees, and uh, she does this special thing, where. She raises sugar gliders. Yeah. And they are often here at the at the uh, at the um, the company. Nocturnally riding in a pouch. Yep. So yep, they sleep most of the time. And these ones are only I think they're about uh, six weeks old. Mm. Five, six weeks old. And so. you want them like carried in a pouch so they get used to people, people. and mm -hmm. things so yeah, they're they around people. Yeah, they gotta be humanized. You gotta hold them a lot. So Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that what you call it? Humanizing them? Yep, humanizing them. <laughs> <laughs> I think I missed my training when I was young. Yeah, you know. So, if there's a question for the Sugar Gliders and their publicist. Um, so, this one is Lizzie, and this one is Jane after Pride and Prejudice. Ah. So, yeah. I have had one that was named Doomslug. It was on your Instagram, I think, a while mm -hmm. back. Several years ago, but these ones are named after Pride and Prejudice characters. So, yeah. There we are. Awesome. Thanks for. Do you want to just get uh, yeah, while well, you're get here? Koa up yeah. On my lap for a second. Yeah. So the away. they're just going to slip into their little pouch. And are we doing the other one right now or in a few minutes? We'll just have, because we're at 10 minutes, I think we'll just have uh, have the other one right now. Okay, that's what I Lex think. is already here. And then then we'll just go to, that's all of our celebrity guests. Okay, come on. Come on. Good boy. Okay, sit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, a, little, a little puppy ASMR right there. Okay. No, sit. No, you don't want to show off? You love showing off. This is Nikoa. He's my service dog. If they uh, can't really both call Koa a pet and not a pet, I mean, he's here yeah. working, yeah. Um, but he's, he's the, the closest we have to a company pet because yes. he's the, really usually the only pet allowed in the house, yep. even though he's not a pet, he's here working, but yep. closest thing we have because all the others, they're not supposed to be in here. Uh, so, so he gets to come in. Yeah. <laughs> and he's being crazy right now. Sit. Mm -hmm. um, he, many people he, are wondering... Everybody. Oh. Yes. People are wondering about the breed. Uh, he's an Alaskan Klikai. So, yep. Try saying that one five times fast. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thanks, Lex. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for stopping by. That, and that, that is all of our pets. Um, well, all the ones that we have locally that we can bring. There are some cats and things that we thought would be a bad idea to drive over here. Well, and I don't need any more of the world to hate my other yes. pet, mm -hmm. Zara. <laughs> so, nine minutes left. Uh, why don't we, uh, Steve, why don't you come and get sign, sign that and I will sign it. And um, then, man, we'll have to have a, ta a 10 second countdown. Oh, uh, you have a timer right here. Just yeah, so no. Know. Oh, uh, is that is that timer? That is accurate. That is accurate. So I have a timer. We are at four point six or forty one point six seven, um, which is 
Uh, I don't think we're going to get to 42. That would have been yeah. awesome, but you know, I'm you not going to beg. It's, it, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't. It, it feels like uh, uh, asking for anything more. <laughs> and yes. uh, we're going to close the uh, last giveaway right now. Um, yep, do we have a winner? Two winners. Yep. There's one. Uh, well, it's not the last one yet. Yeah, we can so, give away the sketch oh, yeah. still. Liam Kelly, congratulations. Email contest at brandonsanderson.com. And then William Blevins has won the, the second one, um, whichever one Kellen decides is which. <laughs> and uh, and we still need to do a giveaway for this one. We're going to do a giveaway. We should one. maybe do that. Like, Let's uh, do that very, right now. You want to do it right now? Okay, Shall we're going to we? close All this right. one in a couple minutes. Yeah. Steve, you get to pick the word. Stargile. Stargile. S T A R G Y L E. That's his uh that's uh there, there there's a there's a person in the Stormlight Archive <laughs> named Stargile, and it may indeed be Steve Argyle. <laughs> uh my artist friends tend to show up in the books. Um so the Lightweaver Stargile. I and was pretty so proud of coming up with that one. <laughs> it feels very, uh, very rock star-ish. If you uh, didn't hear the spelling, I have it on the screen right now. Yeah. Just copy that. Mm-hmm. So, oh. I wonder who that is. Uh, that's not me actually. That's me actually wondering. that We don't have another <laughs> guest uh, uh, that I know of uh, coming. So, seven minutes left. This has been, this has been quite the experience. It has. Uh, uh, we uh, we actually had um, an, a poll uh, among all of our friends and in the company how we thought this would do. Um, and I wrote down my guess at two million. Uh, as I said before, my actual guess was five million, but I felt like as company owner, I should underestimate just in case mm -hmm. it didn't go as well as people had hoping that they don't then feel like they've disappointed me. But I, I honestly thought five million. Uh, what did, did you did you guess? I I did. I, he almost won. He did I almost? Lost won? He just <laughs> lost the other one. Yeah. He just lost number of backers. Number of backers. You had guessed. You, you guessed 160 or something like that. 100. I don't know about 160,000. Yeah. So I I vaguely remember. I there were there were a handful of things. So you I got a lot won, closer. You almost yeah. won that one. Yeah. Well, I, I had a strategy. I kind of. I mean. Like the other Kickstarters are amazing, but they were a little bit for people who already had the mm -hmm. books. And so it's kind of like, this is brand new stuff. Like this is gonna attract not only your fans, but new fans. I know a lot of my friends have been a little bit intimidated to jump into uh, the, the Sanderverse. There's so much stuff and people are like, well, you should read Mistborn first. No, 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 no. You should start with Stormlight Archive. No, 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 I'll interest, you know. And there's just kind of, I want to, but I don't know where to start. And so I know dozens of people who they're like, I got in on this and this is going to be my step into reading Brandon Sanderson. And so I, I kind of was, was banking on that. I'm like, you're going to get more people um, introduced to you this way. And it's not just your hardest core fans um, getting a really fancy version of a book they have. So um, I, I felt like I guessed pretty high. And then I was like, as the Kickstarter was going, I'm like, holy crap, I totally, totally underestimated this. We yes. all <laughs> underestimated it. Even the, our winner, who is Owen, uh, he guessed how much? 20? 20 million. 20 million. As a joke. Uh, so. as, as a joke. Uh, and has now guessed the number of backers closest and the, uh, the amount of money closest. So congratulations, Owen. Wow. You, uh, you won two awards. Um, made by our, uh, our, um, marketing director, Jeremy, who's a woodworker. So there's your They'll awards. Finished, they're not, should we show them on screen? Yeah. Uh, this uh, one has Steve's name on it. Uh, it has Steve's name on it. <laughs> <laughs> that that close. Yeah. You're that close. So, uh, sorry, Steve. <laughs> I really thought you had it. Yep. That. So, um, so are these, um, they're going to be lasered. They're going to be lasered. Okay, so the final numbers. they want the final number. So they'll laser the number and then they'll have like the dragon steel thing on them. And probably so. stained, I would assume. And stained, yep. Yeah. Yep, they will look very nice. Oh, I don't uh, need they to, already look They're not on nice. stream right now. They're so. just so oh, they're wow. just like a we uh, uh Jeremy came up with oh. this like a quick block of wood that has like the dragon steel symbol on the top and then it's going to have stuff like there. So, well, there you are. Um and we're at 4 minutes left. Yeah, let's um announce that winner. Mhm. Mm 
Okay. Announce the winner of Steve's Art. It is Man Manuel. Oh, the chat needs to stop moving. Almagro. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Congratulations. Yeah. Email a contest at brandonsanderson.com and uh, yeah. we'll do the rest. And here's all these people trying to be the last one. Uh, Coming on now uh, with, the, uh, with the three and a half minutes left. <laughs> um, so 41.717 is what it says yeah. right now. So uh, that's mm. just <laughs> it's it's pretty insane. Can it's insane. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I need to be like $80,000 <laughs> a minute. <laughs> um, but uh, during our first day, Kickstarter was behind. Um, displaying yeah. what it actually been. So I don't know how they do because I'm sure they're processing things mm -hmm. and then launching on here. So I bet the number continues to climb for a few minutes after. Yeah. I noticed. You remember last time? I don't remember. If it did. But uh, but that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to complain about double the <laughs> top Kickstarter of all time. Uh, as, uh, as the joke goes, we're going to need a bigger warehouse. Um, we're going to need a bigger and bigger warehouse. What are we doing These here? are little streamers. Oh, streamers. Okay. I think, I think you just flick them. I'm I not sure. I don't know how they work. Yeah, oh. I didn't buy these. So. Do you pull? Dude, the Do you pull? Oh, you pull them? Okay. 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 They look very they, sketchy. Uh, and then I think you throw <laughs> the paper. They're not explosive. They're not explosive. Okay. They're not explosive. Oh, they don't. These are just long strings, so oh, we have clean up these. easier. throw them. Okay, yeah. so they, they're not poppers. That's better for people who might be lifting, listening on headphones or something. So theoretically, these are not going to explode in our hands. Um, and the, the, do we ha does everyone in the back have them? They're going to throw them up. I think, uh, yeah, I think here. we're covered. So, uh, so I think... Yeah, uh, Steve and I uh, are going to get uh, covered with is uh, yeah are going to be covered with uh, all kinds of things. One hundred and ten so. seconds now. Oh, one hundred and ten oh, seconds. That's an that's arbitrary fun. number. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess yeah. So, um, so yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm going to have to run as soon as this is done because I have a class tonight. That someone is subbing <laughs> for me for fifteen minutes, so I'm going to vanish very quickly after this uh, this happens. Um, but. Uh, Thank you all. Let me thank you right now. Uh, we hope to have many awesome things for you in the future. I think this has also made uh, Hollywood pay a lot of attention to us. A lot of people are paying a lot of attention to us. So hopefully this is, uh, this is something that we can spiral into bigger and better things even. But right now we're just going to make sure that your books look awesome, that your swag looks awesome, and that everybody is super happy with what they get uh, so that uh, we can do this in the, in the future. So we're at one minute. Oh, the countdown it turns turned red. red. Turns yeah. red. Oh, it's nice and red. Um, and here's these last people trying to be the last person. Um, very, uh, very, very uh, riding the line for you there. Yeah. Uh, is there a point you think this will stop being surreal? Uh, I don't know. It is for me. I don't know. I'm my, words uh, in your mouth. My whole life is surreal. Uh, <laughs> I kind of got used to it uh, when the Wheel of Time happened, and suddenly I was on CNN and things like that. So... Uh, ever since then, my life has been weird, but in the best of ways. <laughs> so. Seconds. Cool. All right. It's getting tense. Going. Here we go. Going 15. So, so we're going to count together. Yes. Sorry for those who are listening. Three, 10, seven, 9, nine eight, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah. <laughs> oh, those were kind of nice. Ah. There we go. Yo, look at all of this. <laughs> Poor Koa. <laughs> I'm glad that we don't have many of the pets here right now. Awesome. Hey, guys, we funded. <laughs> Ah, uh, we have funded. All right. That's fantastic. Thank you, everyone. We're going to call the stream here because I'm going to run off to my class, and uh, everyone's going to, else is going to have food and party. Uh, oh, there we go. And I am now uh, this. Uh, again, thank you so much, and uh, we will see you next week on the stream for uh, with Jancy. So take care. <laughs>